you who are on the road must have a code that you can live by and so become yourself because the past is just a goodbye teach your children well their father's hell did slowly go by and feed them on your dreams the one they picks the one you know by don't you ever ask them why if they told you you would cry so just look at them and sigh and know they And you, of tender years, can't know the fears that your elders grew by. And so please help them with your dreams. They seek the truth before they can die. Teach your parents well their children's hell will slowly go by and feed them on your dreams the one they picks the one you know by don't you ever ask them why if they told you you would cry so just look at them and sigh and know they Thank you so much. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Michael Showalter, and it is my honor to serve as your representative to the Unity Board of Trustees. We're so glad you joined us this morning. Our Sunday services are at 9.30 and 11.30, and we live stream at 9.30 and would like to welcome our live stream audience. We share a common vision, and that is to celebrate a world transformed. Our approach to transforming the world is both revolutionary and lasting, and it's found in our mission. Namely, it is to inspire and empower, full of expression of the divine within you through prayer, education, and service. I'm not here to pray to some mother, mother, please fix the world so I can be peaceful. I'm here for you to discover you are peace, and by knowing that, We'll live in a transformed world. Every week, Unity Minneapolis provides you opportunities to continue your inner transformation. Here's just a few examples of what's coming up soon. Today is the last day of the book drive for the students of Noble Elementary School. However, the school always welcomes book donations at any time, and the book lists are in the garden court and or on the website. Today, following the 1130 service, is the fall community picnic. So please join us in the upper parking lot. The picnic lunch will be provided and fun and games for kids and families. This is an annual event which ends with our closing bell ceremony. Everyone is welcome. There's also plenty of volunteer opportunities if you want to have kid, help kids enjoy the experience or help people enjoy the community picnic. See John. Next Sunday, September 18th, we're very honored to welcome Reverend Dr. Martha Creek coming to Unity Minneapolis. She will be sharing the Sunday lesson, and then she's going to host an afternoon workshop called Pearls of Great Price at 1.30 here in the sanctuary. So please put that on your calendar. It's a wonderful opportunity. I've worked with her twice in the past. I can tell you, you won't regret the experience. In two weeks, 
Sunday afternoon, the 25th, Coffee, Tea, and Reverend Pat is an invitation to all of our new people to please come and get together with our senior minister, Reverend Pat, to learn more about our community, to get to know Reverend Pat, and to meet others who are newer to the community. Just please come and join. There's a lot more information on these and other upcoming events on the Unity website, the Facebook page, in the bulletin, in the insert, in our electronic weekly newsletters, either peak of the week or happening at Unity. So please, there's lots of opportunities. Search them out so you can live in a world transformed. So now, if you'll find this idea agree agreeable, please go inside and give yourself and others the gift of this sacred hour. Set an intention that for the next hour, you'll be here and you'll be now. Please, we begin our service with prayer led by Reverend Pat. So join me in our opening prayer. I invite you, if you would, just to go within. Go within to that place that only you can go. That holy place. That infinite, invisible <laughs> presence that dwells within. And today we just pause and remember... We remember all of those that lost their lives that were affected by 9-11. And today we pause and we remember the family of Queen Elizabeth and all of those that are grieving. We give thanks for the legacy of love that she has left. And so today we know that this service unfolds in a way that is truly a blessing to each and every one of us. Grateful that we have surrendered again to that spirit within. And we continue to surrender throughout this service, allowing spirit to guide this service. So it is with great joy and great appreciation that we say together, thank you, God. Together, thank you, God. Again, thank you, God. And yet again, thank you, God. Let's applaud this picnic day, okay? Whoa. If you're able to do so, we invite you to stand for our opening song. You know, I picked this song and I thought not many congregations get the opportunity to sing Peace Train. And it's a little tricky, but you know what? You are not an ordinary group of folks. And I thought it'd be fun for you to sing Peace Train. So here we go. Ready? One, two, three, and two, and oh, I've been happy lately. Thinking about the good things to come And I believe it could be Something good has begun Oh, I've been smiling lately Dreaming about the world as one And I believe it could be Someday it's going to come Cause out on the edge of darkness There rides a peace train A peace train take this country Come take me home again Oh, I've been smiling lately Thinking about the good things to come And I believe it could be Something good has begun Oh, peace train sounding louder Right on the peace train ooh ah -ee -ah -ooh -ah. Come on the peace train This peace train, holy roller Everyone jump on the peace train Ooh, ah, ee, ah, ooh, ah. Come on the peace train oh, Get your bags together Go bring your good friends too Because it's getting nearer It soon will be with you oh, Come and join the living It's not so far from you And it's getting nearer Soon it will all be true this peace train sounding louder, right on the peace train. Ooh, ah, ee, ah, ooh, ah. Come on the peace train. 
His peace train, holy roller. Everyone jump on the peace train. Come on the peace train. Oh, I've been crying lately. Thinking about the world as it is. Why must we go on hating? Why can't we live in bliss? Cause out on the edge of darkness, there rides a peace train. A peace train, take this country. Come take me home again. A peace train sounding louder. Ride on the peace train. Ooh, I, 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 I. Come on the peace train. It's peace train, holy roller. Everyone jump on the peace train. Ooh, I, 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 I. Come on the peace train. Ooh, I, 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 I. Is this a peace train? Thank you, and please be seated. You know, unity is uh, that opening and welcoming inclusive community. We teach practical things that help us to live meaningful, healthy, and prosperous lives. Because we are all that open and welcoming inclusive community, one of our favorite things to do here is to welcome those that are new or they feel like they are new to unity today. So I'm going to invite you, if you would, if you are new or you feel like you're new today, to take your courage in your hand and raise your hand as I raise my hand. We certainly want to connect with you. Uh, courage out there, courage out there. And you know what? Either there's no courage or they prefer not to raise their hand. <laughs> so we're all new here today. We welcome you. We also welcome you that are live streaming with us today. Grateful that you are here today as well. There's a link there if you choose to fill out that connection card. Someone from Unity Minneapolis will reach out to you and connect with you. You know what? Let's appreciate our live streamers. They're a vital part of our community. A vital part of our community. So we welcome you as well. Okay, let's, uh, let's affirm our mission statement. It's found in your order of service, our mission statement. Together, we are a vibrant, inclusive, prosperous spiritual community inspiring and empowering full expression of the divine within through prayer, education, and service. And this series affirmation, together, I shine God's light in the world. Again, I shine God's light in the world. Again, we're glad you're with us, and let's settle in for the reading of the Daily Word. We now move deeper into spirit with the reading of the Daily Word. You are invited to mentally add your prayers to our prayer box. After the service, the prayer box is located in the garden court where you may add your written requests. You may also submit an online prayer request via our website. Your, pray, your prayers are prayed with by our prayer ministry for seven days and then they are forwarded to silent unity where they are prayed with for an additional 30 days. The word for today, Sunday, September 11th, 2022, is remembrance. You live in my heart. Whether they have passed on recently or many years ago, the people for whom I have cared deeply are alive in my heart. If I feel sad, or lonely for those I miss, I pause to recall a special memory or something unique about them that made them ordinary, the ordinary days feel magical. Reflecting on the love and joy we shared and the blessings their lives afforded me, I feel comforted. I am thankful that these memories will always be mine to treasure. I know that life does not end with death. Life is eternal, and my loved ones will always be beautiful, beloved expressions of spirit. I am grateful those who have passed from this life experience continue to live in spirit and are forever in my heart. And from Psalms chapter 112, verse 6, for the righteous will never be moved they will be remembered forever. The word for today 
is remembrance. To be humble, to be kind, it is a giving of a peace in your mind. To a stranger, to a friend, to give in such a way that has no end. We are love. We are one. We are. The day is done. We are peace. We are war. We are how we treat each other, nothing more. To be bold and to be brave. It is the thinking that the heart can still be saved. And the darkness can come quick The dangers in the anger And the hanging on of it We are love We are one We are how we treat each other When the day is done We are peace We are one we are how we treat each other and nothing, nothing more. Tell me what is that you see? A world that's full of endless possibilities. Heroes don't look like they used to. They look like you. Join me now. Join me now for a time of being still. A time for being connected at one with each other, with the world. Take that deep breath and then breathe it out. Feeling the breath. The breath in. And as the breath is released, allow the body to relax, feeling that divinity that you are and the divinity that connects us all, that in which we live and move and have our being. And another breath and a pause knowing that at this moment we have the choice, the choice of love, the choice of peace, compassion for ourselves and for each other and for our world. So as we begin <clears throat> this time of reflection and meditation, we share with you these words from John Davis. At this turning point, as at others, we pause from our struggle to hold on and relax into the passing of what is 
no more. We pause from our sadness and rest on a carpet of green moss. We pause from our longing and drink in the sufficiency of this moment. We pause from our dread of emptiness and enter a deeper emptiness, still, luminous, and sweet. At this turning point, as at others, we take a breath and step forward unprepared and yet awake. And you, my friends, from what do you pause at this turning point as at others? Let us take that into the silence. Together, one with one, we can build the new earth, a place of wholeness and diversity. We can transform our organizations into communities, places of compassion and care. Our leaders will focus on affirming and renewing values, building community and releasing human possibilities. Connection, not acquisition, will be seen as the primary human motivator. The core question will be, how can I help? In calling forth this new day, let us be guided by our hearts to be the vessels for the light that powers the universe. To be a chord in the one song of our healed and holy home. May it be so for you. Amen. Oh, let us turn our thoughts today to Martin Luther King and recognize that there are ties between us all men and women living on the earth ties of hope and love of sister and brotherhood that we are bound together in our desire to see the world become a place in which our children can go free and strong. We are bound together by the task that stands before us and the road that lies ahead. We are bound and we are bound. There is a feeling like the clenching of a fist. There is a hunger in the center of the chest. There is a passage through the darkness and the mist. And though the body sleeps, the heart will never rest. Shed a little light, oh Lord. Shed a little light, oh Lord. So that we can Shed a little light, oh Lord. Can't get no light from another 
Don't send me no light from a dollar bill. of a fist There is a hunger in the center of the chest There is a passage through the darkness and the mist And though the body sleeps the heart will never rest oh, Let us turn our thoughts today to Martin Luther King And recognize that there are times between us, all oh, men and women living on the earth, ties of hope and love, of sister and brotherhood. It's good to have Michael Monroe back in the house with us. We almost danced together recently. It was powerful, very powerful. We were in the same space. And we were, we were, we were. It was just great. Reggae Music Month. What was that? It was Reggae Music Month. Oh, Reggae Music Month. That's what it was. It was, I was. Mike, it's so good to have you with us today. Thanks for having me. It's a joy to have you here. Wow. And I love the song Shed a Little Light, didn't you? And, you know, it brought back a lot of memories. How about for you? You know, and you know who wrote the song? James Taylor. James Taylor. Well, you know what? When I, I, I went back and looked at a lot of his music, and I remember so much of his music, but I don't really remember a lot about James Taylor. Do you know why? Because I was so into myself at that point in my life, at that stage in my life, that I wasn't necessarily reaching out trying to learn about other people. But in doing some of my research on James Taylor, it was he, was an, he is an amazing man. And I know, Laura, you've had some encounters. Uh -huh. <laughs> I had like two degrees and one degree of separation. I know, yes, I know. I, I played a happy hour at the Hyatt Regency for a while in the lobby, and the orchestra hall artists would usually stay there. And so I knew that James Taylor was in town, so I'm playing, I wasn't very good, so I had to like watch what I was doing. It was early on. And I turned and there he was walking in. And he had like a fishing hat on, like my dad would wear. And so I started playing Fire and Rain and he turned and went. And so. It was fantastic. And James Taylor's bass player forever, Jimmy Johnson, is from Minneapolis. Whoa. And I would play duets with his, his mother at the senior residence facility that I played the piano. So there. I have one more I didn't tell you about before the service. The song After the Lesson, Conviction of the Heart. Oh. Kenny Loggins. Yeah, yeah. Saying backups for Kenny Loggins. One time, one day. It's true. You did. I did. Backup. I did. Kenny Loggins. Yes, I got a phone call a week before the Starkey hearing thing. And my friend said, can you uh, hire six people and organize backups for this song for Kenny Loggins? And I said, yes. But I didn't know what key or which arrangement he'd done. So I wrote him down, and then we did it. And um, during the rehearsal, he said, could I just hear the backups? And I was just going, oh, my God. <laughs> but I picked the right version of the right key, and it worked out. <laughs> so we never know, Mike, what's going to happen. We never know. We never Maybe know. I'll meet and play with James Taylor. We never know. Well, you know, he would be blessed to have you, Laura Dockin. He'd be blessed to have you. So Kenny Lark, I mean, not Kenny Lark, James Taylor. 
You know, he was an American songwriter and guitarist. He was six-time Grammy Award winner. He was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2000. He was one of the best-selling music artists of all times, having sold more than 100 million records worldwide. The song that we just shed a little light was truly a tribute to Dr. King. And he says, he says uh, that he says, uh, <sighs> a shed a little light is Taylor's gentle, stirring tribute to Martin Luther King in 2005 interview. He said, to me, King is really one of the central heroes, you know, just in our time, a real exceptional, rare person who contributed the right things at the right time. You know, I think my parents, they led me to an awareness of what was going on. You know, they felt amazingly strong about the civil rights struggle, and I guess it stayed with me. It always stayed with me. So it came out in a song. And that wasn't that wonderful, you know? And I, when I was reading the history in his life, I got so into it because he did not have an easy life. You know, I must tell you guys, you probably don't, you probably don't know this, but, you know, he had a drug issue. Did you know that? And he was in and out of recovery so many times. But not only did he have a drug issue, he had, a, he had some mental health issues as well. And he, was, he suffered depression. And he was in and out of institutions as well. And, you know, when I thought of that and when I heard about James Taylor, I thought about literally the pe sometimes parents come to me and they're they're con Believe it or not, parents can be concerned about their children. Have you noticed that? <laughs> they really are. They come and they're concerned about their children. And I'm not saying that parents don't need to be concerned about their children and that parents don't need to take care of their children. Of course they do, because I, you love them so much. But at the same time, we must remember that each and every one of us has our own unique path on this journey. And sometimes what we think is not, is a total failure, and I'm sure his parents must have struggled with that. Sometimes what we think is a total failure is a whopping huge success. You got that? You got that? You know, it's like we, we don't know. We don't know what's going to happen. God knows, and I don't have to know. But James Taylor was an amazing person. Of course, you know, as I said, I remember his songs, Fire and Rain, Something in the Way, Something in the Way She Moves. You can change the lyrics on that if you choose to. How, <laughs> how sweet it is to be loved by you. Oh, my goodness. And you've got a friend. Amazing music this man has contributed to the world. And he is not through yet. You know, God's not through with him yet. It's amazing to see what's going to happen with the rest of his career. Now, obviously, this song, Shed a Little Light, Shed a Little Light, really, uh, did you pick up on the lyrics? It was like he was asking spirit to shed a little light so what we know what to do next. But I think sometimes we may forget that we are the ones, we are the ones that are called to shed a little light in this world. If we are the hands and the feet and the voice of spirit, if we are God in expression and we are one with that expression, then we have been called to be the light, to shed a little light in the world. Well, and I love this one here. I love this particular verse. It really touched my heart. There's a feeling like the clenching of a fist. There's a hunger in the center of my chest. There's a passage through the darkness and the mist. And though the body sleep, the heart will never rest. Don't you love that? We know without a doubt that that feeling in our, for me, that feeling, that clenching in my chest is really about the world sometimes. It's about the upsetness about what's going on in the world, what's happening in the world. And I can get uptight about it. And more than likely, you can too. And then there's a hunger in the center of my chest. That hunger in the chest, that I would ask you, what is that hunger in the center of your chest? I believe that hunger in that center of our chest is possibilities, infinite possibilities on what can happen in this world. You know, it's that possibilities within because that's where we experience God, that God presence within, which is infinite possibilities to be expressed. And there's a passage to the darkness and the mist. And though the body sleeps, the heart will never rest. 
Oh, my goodness. You know, there's a passage. I don't have to know it. I just have to look for the light in order to take the next step, in order to move through that passage. So today, I know that regardless of what's going on in your life, and I know many of you, like me, are going, have a lot of things going on in your life. And we think we have to know the answer. No, for me, what I have to do is surrender one more time and look for the light. Look for the light that is being revealed within me and take that one more step. And you know what? I believe that if we open ourselves to spirit, open ourselves to each other, that 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 time and that place and the how-to will be revealed to us. Charles Fillmore. <laughs> uh, I look for jokes about light, you know, shed a little light. And it says, yes, I shed a little light. I usually see the light, but often I see it when I open the refrigerator. Don't you love that? <laughs> And I thought, oh, how true for me. I often see that light when I open the refrigerator. And then there was a, I put a skylight in my apartment. I love it. The neighbors upstairs really didn't appreciate it. <laughs> Charles Fillmore, co-founder of our Unity Movement, of course, as so often I do, I go to Charles for definitions and what he says about light. And this is what he says when he says, shed a little light. He says, Light is that understanding principle in mind. In divine order, it always comes first into consciousness. Think about that. That light comes first into consciousness. Light is a symbol of wisdom. And when Jesus says, I am the light of the world, he meant that he was the expressor of truth in all of his aspects. That's what Jesus meant, according to Charles Fillmore. And guess what? But Jesus says also what? That we are the light of the world. That we are the light of the world. And therefore, we are to be the expressor of truth as well. As well as we understand it. Also, Charles Fillmore says, there's an inner light, the illumination of spirit, resident in the center of every man's being. And my experience, in order to, to truly get in touch with that light and to express that light, he said, I have, to be, I have to live consciously, and I have to practice the principles as I understand the principles. Practice these principles so that when that light comes through me, that I recognize that light. That I recognize that light. And it's only through practicing and practicing and practicing the principles that we teach here that we are able to recognize that light. Of course, the song, Shed a Little Light, James Taylor said it was based upon a a song that he learned, and that is This Little Light of Mine. Okay, so we know that that song itself was very powerful in the civil rights movement as well. That was a gospel song that was sung, and he says, so I based it on that song. This Little Light of Mine, I gotta let it shine. And of course, we know that song is based on scripture. That song came from Jesus itself. Jesus teaching on the, the, um, uh, the Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount, and the first time that Je Jesus stepped out and gave a sermon, that's what it was. And he talked about light in that first time. And he'd already gone through the Beatitudes, or I like to call different attitudes that we are to have in our own life, different attitudes. And he says, he says here in Matthew, he says, you are the salt of the earth. Now, he's talking to people just like me and you. He's talking, he says, you are the salt of the earth. And if salt has lost its taste, how can its, satis uh, how can its saltiness be restored? If it is no longer good for anything, it is thrown out and trampled underfoot. And he says, you're the salt of the earth. You know these principles. You know what we teach. And in order for it to be effective, and other, and other than it just being beautiful and nice truths, and I know like you and like me, I love to hear the truths. I love to hear the principles. And I know without a doubt that they are beautiful. But he says, unless 
We practice these principles. Unless we put them into practice, it is like just throwing salt and on the floor that we trample on. It's not good for any throne, anything, but it's thrown out and trampled underfoot. So my dear friends, I believe what he's saying here is, guess what? Not only do you have to understand the truth, you have to live the truth the best of your ability. Guess what? That's our teachings as well. Those of you that's been coming around here for more than two days, you know them. You know that that fifth principle is we have to put it into action. We have to not only pray and understand these principles, but we have to move our feet as, God, as we are guided to do so. He goes on to the next verse. He talks about salt. And then he talks about, Jesus says, you are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, shuts it under, puts it under a bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good work and give glory to your Father which is in heaven. You are the light of the world. Now, obviously, he was talking to people that understood because at that time, there was as many as 30, 40 people living in a home, in a home. And each family, of course, had their own lampstand. And what would happen is obviously they would come and they would light the lamp. And in a good home where everybody got along, I'm sure they were all unity homes, where everybody got along, the light was spread out through the, throughout the house. But when there was disagreement or upsetness, the light was not that way. Often people would sit in the dark rather than share their light, their lamp, with others. And sometimes people were poor. They didn't have the oil or the fuel that they needed to light that lamp. And they would wait until someone came home and light the lamp so that they could see to do their work. And Jesus says, no, we don't put it under a bushel. In other words, that bushel basket, people would literally at times put that basket there and put the light under the basket so it would not necessarily spread out to their neighbors. And he goes ahead and he tells us that we are the light of the world and that we are to share that light in a major way. And how do, he goes on to say in Emmett Fox in his wonderful book, The Sermon on the Mount, he talks about this. He says, we're not only to share our light, but we're to share our light by our livingness, not by the words that we say. You know, you've often heard, I'd rather see a good sermon any day than hear one. Please don't use that against me, okay? But I'd rather see a good sermon. I'd rather hear a good sermon any day. I see a sermon than hear one. And I know that for us, like again, it goes back to we want to understand these principles and we want to live them in our life. And when we do, we are indeed the light of the world. Now, I think sometimes for me, I struggle a little bit about how to go about being that light in the world. How do I go about living my life in a way that represents my values and I can still be the light in the world? Okay. Well, you know, it's not necessarily always easy, especially with what's going on in our world right now. Often what I want to do, that cleansing of the fist in my chest, I want to jump out there and take action. And sometimes the action that I want to take is not necessarily nice and polite and kind. And yet that's what I'm called to do. You know, there's, there's a way, I believe, with all my heart that we can take the action that we need to take and still still work these unity principles that we teach here in such a kind way and in work them in such a way that we do not have to be a doormat for other people. Last week, I was introduced. Reverend Tony spoke last week. What a wonderful lesson. If you've not listened to it, I encourage you to do so. But last week, Reverend Tony introduced a book that I was not familiar with, The Powers That Be by Walter Wink. Walter Wink is a uh, he calls it progressive Christianity, progressive Christianity. And he really exemplifies, in my opinion, many of the things that were taught by Dr. King, 
Gandhi, and other great teachers as well. But what got my attention last week was this. One of the things that got my attention was that the principle of this, this nonviolent struggle. In other words, we are called, I believe, to be in a way of nonviolent. And sometimes that clenching in that chest that wants things to change for me, it's, I can easily go to that place of violence. Well, not too easily. This is Reverend Pat you're talking to. But I can actually think it as a man thinketh, so he is. So I can easily go to that place, if not acting on it, at least thinking about it. This is wrong. This needs to happen. I can get some judgments going quickly, just like that. And guess what? He says, uh, Walter Wink says, that the principles of nonviolent struggle is that this means the means must be consistent with the ends. That stuck with me last week when Reverend Tony used that. The means must be consistent with the end. So if I want peace on this planet, if I want peace in my world, it's very simple. Then the means that I get there must be peaceful. It must be peaceful. So all of a sudden it's like, okay, that clenching in my chest, it's got to turn into something that is peaceful. Peaceful. He goes, nonviolent revolution is not a program for seizing power. It is, says Gandhi, a program for transforming relationships, ending in a peaceful transfer of power. Mm. And he gave some examples of where that happened. I think we could give some examples in this country where it has not happened. The peaceful transfer of power. But he also says that if we want to be in this nonviolent struggle, if we want to enter into it and use our principles that we teach here, he says that we must have respect for the rule of law. The rule of law. He says here, in civil disobedience practiced by King and Gandhi, those who appeal to a higher moral authority nevertheless subject themselves to the principles of civil law. No proponent of the third way would attempt to get off scot-free for breaking an unjust law, for that would encourage the chaos of lawlessness in a society already plagued by legalized injustice. So he says, so two things must take place. If I want to change the world, there's ways that I can do it through non-resistance and keep those laws. And of course, what I thought of when he gave that example was, as you know, I know it's hard to believe, but I'm from the South, you know, and so the deal is, I can remember very clearly the marching of uh, Dr. King on the Selma Bridge. I can see those images of what happened that day. And as I've said, I've walked that bridge more than once in order to recapture or attempt to recapture the feelings that must have happened that day. But here it was, a mass of people walking or getting ready to walk without a permit, without a permit. And the, the authorities had two choices. They could either let them walk or not let them walk. And by them not letting them walk, yes, they were in the letter of the law, so to speak. But by, not letting, by letting them walk, obviously, many, many people were hurt. Hurt, maimed, and it was sad. And so they stood in a way of non-resistance. At the same time, you might look at that and you might say that walk, that walk was a failure. It was a, in my opinion, it was a huge success. They practiced nonviolence. Even though people were hurt, my dear friends, guess what? It brought attention to the world. It brought attention to the world about the, the horrendous treatment of blacks in the South. Yes, it was a win in that respect. Someone, 
In fact, Emily Kate, not Emily Kate, Amelda Shanklin, in her book, What Are You?, has a chapter in there on non-resistance. And she talks about it is much more challenging to be in that place of non-resistance than resistance. And I have to agree with that. In resistance, often, you just act out from your gut that clenched fist. But to be in that place of non-resistance means to be in a place of peace. And that particular day, those people that walked were in a place of peace. I often have said, each of us, guided by that light within us, will be guided on what to do and how to do it. And praise God for that. And at the same time, my dear friends, before we step out and do anything, let us go out with a heart of peace, a heart of peace and a heart of love. And if we do not, we will be contributing to the situation as opposed to helping to solve the situation. He closes this particular chapter with, the way of nonviolence, the way Jesus chose, is the only way that is able to overcome evil without creating new forms of evil and making us evil in return. To those trapped in the myth of redemptive violence, nonviolence must appear suicidal. But to those who have looked unflinchingly at the record of violence in the everyday world, nonviolence appears to be the only way left, and not just for Christians, but for the world. Wow, nonviolence. That's what we are called to do. You are called to do. Wow. So our job, in my opinion, is to people get ready. Stand up. Stand up and shed a little light. And remember that that light that you shed and that I shed, my dear friends, is my life. It's my life. My life, my life needs to shine in such a way that that light is so strong that other people come to you and come to me and say, I want what you got. And so often in unity, we get excited about unity, and rightfully so, and how many of us have gone home and thought our whole family needs to jump on the bandwagon? <laughs> not, does not work, does it? No. So rather than telling my family, telling your family to jump on the bandwagon, just be the light. Be the light. Let them know that something is different in your life. These obviously are some pretty, for me, these are just challenging times. We've been through some challenging things. This congregation has been through some challenging things. If you don't believe me, come visit me sometimes. <laughs> COVID, what do you do? All the, different, all the differences of opinion around what you can do. I thought of my father several times. I know he rests in peace. My, well, I'm not so sure, but probably he does. And he goes, <laughs> you're kind of damned if you do, and you're damned if you don't. And so I know that even in this, even in this sanctuary, even in this group, there's differences of opinion. Even in this country, I've never seen so much divisiveness in my life. Have you? Have you seen more divisiveness than this right here? You know, and it can become so discouraging sometimes when you go, I'm shedding my light, God, I'm shedding my light. What's happening? Our politics are divided. Our spirituality seems to be divided. If we're not careful, our families are divided. And these are facts. But they're not the truth. We're called to know the truth in the midst of all of this division. And I tell you, for me, one of the most challenging things for me to work in my life is to remember exactly what we teach. And that is that I am one with spirit. I am one with you. And not just one with you because I like you. I'm one with the people I don't like. I'm one with all of those people that have a different opinion than me. I'm one, as I said one time, I am one with everything on this planet, and so are you. That connecting invisible thread that connects us all is spirit, and we are one with it. So many things happened this past week. You know, I, um, 
one of the things that happened this past week was um, uh, <laughs> the portraits of the Obamas were unveiled in the White House. And I, that came up on my Facebook feed and got my attention, and I ended up listening to the whole thing. And it was an amazing presentation. And I think that what really touched me more than anything of all the speakers, of course, was um, Michelle Obama. I want to share with you a couple of things that she said, and it just says, and I can't share the whole thing, it's too long, but just an excerpt of two from her, from her talk. Um, it just touched, it gave me, it gave me, in the midst of these challenges, it gave me hope. And I don't know about you, but I look for these places that I can get hope, that I can be inspired, that someone can remember that the good is still present regardless of appearances. The good is still present. She says, because, as Barack says, if the two of us can end up on the walls of the most famous address in the world, then again, it is so important for every young kid who is doubting themselves to believe that they can too. That is what this country is about. It is not about blood or pedigree or wealth. It's a place where everyone should have a fair shot. Whether you're a kid taking two buses and a train just to get to school or a single mother who is working two jobs to put some food on the table or an immigrant just arriving, getting your first apartment, forging a future for yourself in a place that you have dreamed of. That's why for me, this day as these beautiful portraits were revealed, this day isn't about me or Barack. It's not even about these beautiful paintings. It's about telling the fuller story, a story that includes every single American in every single corner of this country so that our kids and our grandkids can see something more for themselves. And as much as some folks might want us to believe that that story has lost some of its shine, that division and discrimination, everything else might have dimmed its light, I still know deep in my heart what we share, as my husband continues to say, is so much bigger than what we don't. Our democracy is so much stronger than our differences. And this little girl from the South Side is blessed beyond measure to have felt the truth of that fuller story throughout my entire life, never more so than today. She gives me great hope. And I believe that in order for us to change this world so that every kid has a fair shot, a fair opportunity, it begins with us. It begins with us. And I know I'm preaching to the choir here because I know you do it. I'm preaching to me too. I usually teach what I need to learn. But it begins with me whether it's climate change, whatever it is in our world that needs to be changed, we cannot just sit by and let it go by. Each of us are called in our own way. This closing, this next song, I'm excited about too. Laurie has chosen. Al Gore has called it the, uh, what is it, the, mm, the anthem for the environmentalist movement. And I think you'll find out that when you hear the song. Hey guys, we're in this together more than ever. We're in it together. We're all one. We're one with each other and one with all that is. I love you. I bless you. I behold the living presence of God within you, and you give me great hope. And so it is. Amen.
the dreams that we once said. This is the time to bring them back. What were the promises caught on the tips of our tongues? Do we forget or forgive? There's a whole lot of life waiting to be lived when one day we're brave enough to talk with conviction of the I've invited Reverend Tony to the platform with me because she has a special, 
shout out. I do. Yes. I do. We had an amazing day on Labor Day. The women of unity knocked it out of the park. That's a baseball phrase. I'm going to ask those women who were involved in the planning and the execution, and there are a number of them here, to stand up. Come on. Come on. Mary. Rock on. Let your light LA. shine. Come on. Let your light shine. Let your light shine. Come on. <laughs> Woo. Yes. Now, there were a couple of men who also helped. Oh, dear me. And I don't see of them any of them. No, Dick is here. Thank Dick, you, Dick. Come on. The energy was amazing. We moved so much stuff out of our out of our Fillmore room, and then we took it on to other places where it will also be moved for those who are in need of some clothes, some pots and pans, some you name it. Thank you all. It was an amazing effort, and it was beautifully done. When you see these women of unity and these men of unity, say thank you, and then help us next year when we get ready to do it again. Thank you, Reverend Tony. Yes, and uh, it was, you know, it was a wonderful way for this community to practice principles. We practiced principle that day. I'm so proud of this community. Circulation Day. And I was so proud to see so many people from outside of our community, throughout the city, come and take what they needed, absolutely free, absolutely free, just let it go, to see what they needed, for, to, to do what they needed to do with. We, my dear friends, this is principle. As you give, you receive, we know that, we understand that. And that is possible because of this community, and you are this community, so thank you. I'm going to invite our ushers to come forth as we prepare to receive our tithes and our gifts and our offerings. So by all means, if you're giving your gift with someone, uh, hold it together. If you can easily give a gift, you can go to unityminneapolis.org, uh, donate. There's a Q, uh, QR code on your program. You can give a check. You can mail it in. There's many ways to give. We invite those that are also streaming with us today to make a secured gift online as well. So just let us go within and touch that light that we've talked about today, knowing that indeed we are the light of the world, and we give thanks for the opportunity to give, to give of our light, to give of our resources, and for that we're grateful. So let us affirm together our church offertory blessing found in your order of service. Together, divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I give, all that I receive, and all that I am. Thank you, God. Amen. So let us take just a moment as we bless these gifts. We bless all of the gifts and we send them forth to fulfill our vision and mission of a transformed world. Thank you. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. On duty Unity Prayer Chaplains, we invite you to stand. These individuals arrived early to hold this space. Today, if you're in need of prayer, by all means, seek out a Unity Prayer Chaplain. Our co-chaplain leaders has a quick announcement for this morning as well. Thank you. Sorry.
are pleased again this year to invite Unity members to open their hearts and minds and consider whether they are called to become a prayer chaplain. As prayer chaplains, we hold spiritual space in the sanctuary, we pray affirmatively with congregants on Sundays, and we make monthly calls to members. We pray and we hold spread a little light. We hold all prayers in the strictest of confidence. We also support one another at our monthly praying, our monthly prayer chaplain training. So if the thought of becoming a prayer chaplain be seems like a heart-centered calling for you, I invite you to meet Julie and I uh, in the meditation room following this service to learn more about this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, you too can be a prayer chaplain. Cassidy Meeks, our Youth and Family Ministry Director. Our kids gather for our fall program at 1130. We're going to be exploring friendship, get to know you games, prayer, and defining how we want to be together in our community with our heart agreements. Um, and as I'm sure you know by now, after our second service is our community picnic. And we look forward to seeing you. Together, we'll create joy and feel community. And at 2 p.m., we'll close with our bell ceremony. So if you're going to skedaddle out of here, go do that and bring a bell back. We'll have extras, but we hope to see you for our picnic. Thank you, Cassidy. And next week, we continue with our series. The Reverend Dr. Martha Creek will be here. You don't want to miss her. I promise you, you will love her. I promise you that. She's a powerful speaker, and we continue with our series of people getting ready to stand up. So let's stand up. Our prayer for protection and our peace sign, be sure to speak to at least three people you don't know, okay? Together we know that the light of God surrounds us, I am light. The love of God enfolds us, I am love. The power of God protects us, I am power. The presence of God watches over us, I am presence. Wherever we are, God is, I am divine, and all is well. on earth and it has begun with me now there is peace on earth the peace that was meant to be with god as our creator family all are we let us walk with each other in a perfect Let this be the moment now With every step I take Let this be my joyous vow To take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally Somewhere not so far from here All I know is all I feel right now I feel the power growing in my head Sitting on my own all by myself Everybody's here with me I don't need to touch your face to know I don't need to use my eyes to see I keep on wondering if I sleep too long But I always wake up the same or so I keep on wondering if I sleep too long Will I even wake up again or something?
Oh, I'm on my way, I know I am. Times there were when I thought not. Bleeding half my soul in bad company. I thank the moon, I got the strength to stop. Now I'm not making love to anyone's wishes, only for the guide I seek. Cause when I'm wedding low at low in my grave, that's gonna be the only thing that's left of me. And if I make it to the water side, will I even find me a boat or so? And if I make it to the water side, I'll be sure to write you a note or something. Oh, I'm on my way, I know I am. Somewhere not so far from here. All I know is all I feel right now. I feel the power growing in my head. Now life is like a maze of doors and they all Open from the side you're on Just keep on pushing hard, boy Try as you may You're gonna wind up where you started from Gonna wind up where you started from